for this tutorial you're going to need your selected yarn. I'm using Stylecraft Special DK. I'm using a green and an orange for the traditional pumpkin colours but you can use whichever colours you like and I shall leave the details in the description box below of what these colours are called. You will need some stuffing to stuff your pumpkin with. You will also need a short thread of yarn in any colour, it doesn't matter, we're going to use it as a stitch marker. You will need a 4.5mm crochet hook, this is my Phil's Fibre Arts crochet hook in tulip wood. You will also need a pair of scissors and a darning needle. We're going to start the tutorial with the orange colour yarn because we're going to make the base of the pumpkin first. So you want to start off with a slip knot and you can do this whichever way you prefer. Insert your hook and we're first of all going to start off by chaining two. So yarn over, pull through and yarn over, pull through. So we're going to work into the first chain that we've just made. And we're going to do 10 double crochets. That's double crochet in English terms. In the US, this is known as single crochet. So you want to insert your hook, yarn over and pull through. You have two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through both loops on the hook. That's one. And again, two. And three and we'll be working in a circle so as you work round we can um, twist the piece of work so that we meet ourselves at the beginning so that's five six seven eight nine and the last one ten now sometimes when you actually work in a circle you would slip stitch into the first stitch but we're not actually going to do that what we're going to do instead is do two double crochets into the top of each one of those stitches so you want to insert your hook into that very first stitch from the first round and you want to yarn over and pull through and yarn over and pull through again so that's your first double crochet and then you're going to do another double crochet into that same space that you've just worked in so that's two double crochets and we're going to work our way around until you have 20 double crochets so that's four five and six, seven, and eight. And then if you just want to pause the video and work your way until you have 20 stitches and I shall meet you back in our next round. So I now have my 20 stitches and we're ready to move on to our round three. So in this round, we're actually going to do a double crochet into each of the top of these stitches so again we'll end up with 20 stitches in this round now because this is getting a, li a little bit bigger sometimes it's harder to keep count and to know where you've stopped and started etc so we're going to take our different color thread and place it just before the stitch that we're working on here and this is going to act as our stitch marker and then you would simply do your double crochet as normal into the next space so you want to insert your hook into the next space and do your double crochet and we know that when we work round and we get to the stitch just before the um, stitch marker that is our 20th stitch so go ahead and work one double crochet into each of those spaces and I shall meet you back to show you what to do in the next round so I'm at the end of my third round and I've done 20 double crochets into each of the stitches. I've reached my stitch marker so all I need to do is take that out and place that into the next spot 
So this is marking the, the beginning of this round. And for this round, you're actually going to do two double crochets into each space. So at the end of this round, we'll end up with 40 stitches in total. So this is growing our pumpkin. So just insert into the top of the stitch and do one double crochet and another double crochet. So work your way around the whole of the circle and I shall meet you back at the stitch marker. So I've now reached my stitch marker again. So you want to pull that out and pop it into the next space. And then this round is going to consist of 40 double crochets. So just one double crochet into the top of each stitch. So rows five through eight are going to be um, one double crochet into each space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my fifth row. I shall come back when I'm on my sixth row, on my seventh and then on my eighth. And it will just make it easier for you to keep up to date with what row that you're on. So I'm working on my fifth row now. I shall meet you back at the sixth row. So this is the end of my fifth row. You can see it still looks fairly flat, but the edges are starting to curl up a little bit. You want to take out your thread pop it next to that stitch that you've just done and go ahead with your sixth round of one double crochet into each space and I shall meet you back on the seventh round. I'm now at the end of my sixth row. You can see that the sides are starting to curl up nicely. So I'm going to take my stitch marker, replace it, and then double crochet into each of the spaces for my seventh row. So pause the video and I shall meet you back once you've finished this seventh round. And here is my completed seventh round. So I'm going to replace my stitch marker and continue in the same way. So one double crochet into each stitch for my eighth round. Meet me back when you've done this and we're going to start decreasing after that. This is now the end of my eighth row so I'm going to readjust my stitch marker and this time we're going to start decreasing our stitches and we're going to double crochet two stitches together. Now the way that you want to do this is to insert your hook as normal to the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Now instead of yarn over and pull through to create that double crochet, you're then going to go into the next stitch along and yarn over and pull through again because then you'll have three loops on your hook. You then grab your yarn and pull through all three of those loops and that is double crocheting those two stitches together. So then you're then going to go into your next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Don't complete the stitch. You're going to go into the next stitch and yarn over and pull through. You'll have three loops on your hook and you'll yarn over and pull through all three loops on that hook. And I'll just show you that one more time. You're going to insert your hook into the next stitch yarn over and pull through. You'll have two loops on your hook, which we don't complete this stitch yet. We'll go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. So you'll have three loops on your hook and then we'll yarn over and pull through all of those loops on that hook in order to double crochet those stitches together. So that's what this round is going to consist of. And then you'll end up having 20 stitches um, in total because we've minimized those stitches from the eighth round. So pause the video and I shall meet you back at the stitch marker. Now once you get to the end of the this row you'll find that your work is starting to become more bowl like which is fine. Now if you get to the end and you find that you're either over or under on your stitches so say for example here I would double crochet these two stitches together um, and it doesn't quite work out right don't worry it's absolutely fine. This happens to me 
quite a lot it just means that it might have we might have slipped a stitch somewhere or I don't know but really don't be too hung up on it if this happens to you you've got a choice you can either double crochet the next two stitches together or go straight into the next round I'm just going to go straight into the next round so I'm going to place my stitch mark here and I'm going to do one double crochet into each of the stitches from the previous round so that will be 20 stitches in total and um, I shall meet you back at your stitch marker so now I'm at the end of this round so that was our 10th round now you'll notice as you're working now that these stitches might seem a little bit further apart than what these ones are here and um, that's completely normal it's just because we're decreasing the stitch so don't worry about that but what I'm going to do at the moment is going to just pull a bit of thread out on that stitch so we don't lose our um, stitch and you're going to take your stitch marker out and you're going to grab your stuffing and you're going to start to fill your pumpkin now so stuff that as much as you can we will be stuffing it a little bit more the further we get along but just pop some in there and then take your loop and then just pull it a little bit tighter and insert your hook again and we're ready to go for our next round so for this round so for our 11th round we're going to double crochet two stitches together again so pop your stitch marker on and we're going to double crochet two together so we'll ha end up with 10 stitches in total for this round so it might be a little bit more fiddly but you just want to pop your hook underneath that stitch yarn over and pull through under the next stitch yarn over pull through and then yarn over pull through all three loops on the hook give that um, stitch a little bit of a pull just to make it nice and tight so it's not too loose and then continue round double crocheting two stitches together so like I say you'll have 10 stitches in total for that round if you want to pause the video and meet me back at the stitch marker so this is the end of my 11th round and what I'm actually going to do now is um, stuff the pumpkin a little bit more so take some more of the stuff in and insert it in there just to make it nice and firm now I don't buy my stuffing um, specifically I actually use old pillows that might have gone a little bit flat and I actually cut them open and repurpose them that way uh, but you can use whichever kind of stuffing you like you're going to take your stitch marker out and at this point you don't have to use the stitch marker if you don't want to but if it helps then please go ahead and do that but I'm going to now um, double crochet um, two stitches together and then we'll end up with five double crochets in total so underneath yarn over pull through next stitch yarn over pull through and then yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook so that's one and this is classed as our second stitch two three stuff it a little bit more if you want to four and five now if you still find that the gap is a little bit too big which it is here I simply just like go over the over to the opposite side of the circle and do either a slip stitch or a double crochet it doesn't really matter but again into the opposite side yarn over and pull through I'm going to do a double crochet this time pull through and then yarn over 
and pull through again this creates um, a knot to your work and instead of just snipping off the yarn here we're actually going to leave a really long end so I tend to leave a lot more than what I actually need but I'd say minimum of 30 centimeters uh, because we're actually going to use this to create the bobble effect of the pumpkin so you want to snip off your yarn and then you're going to pull that thread all the way out and pull it nice and tight so this is what I call the ugly side of the pumpkin where you can see sort of gaps slightly and this is certainly the better side of the pumpkin so this is going to be the bottom and this will be the top I'm just going to um, thread this into the work by pulling it down into the actual pumpkin and I'm going to thread up my yarn and I'll show you how to make this into this okay so I've threaded up my needle and what you're going to do is insert your needle into the bottom of your pumpkin right through the top so the center of the top pull that all the way through and then you're going to bring your needle from the top underneath again and do exactly the same thing so put it through the top pull it all the way through and you'll notice what that does is it pulls the pumpkin in so the more you pull on that thread the tighter that pumpkin uh, will pull in I then turn my work around and do opposite ends so insert underneath from the bottom might need to give it a bit of a wiggle bottom through the top and then this time when I pull I'm going to lay my thread in the spot that I want it to go so I'm going for the opposite side of the other one pull nice and tight and that brings that in slightly then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that there's a thread here and a thread here so I'm going to bring it round this way insert my hook or needle should I say so insert my needle bring it through the top pull it through and as I pull on the pumpkin it draws it in do the same on the opposite side of the pumpkin insert my needle through the top and pull on the thread and then the, my last two are going to be this side and the opposite side so bring it round pop it in pull it through the top pull nice and tight and then my last one will be this side through the bottom to the top and then that brings in your last side so to tie off what I do is I just hook my needle underneath one of those strands and pull through and then I insert my needle from the top to the bottom and then I just make a knot in my work and then you can just put that through anywhere any piece of the work and then pull it through and then snip off be nice and careful that you don't snip any of the actual work and then that is your pumpkin then all that's left to do is make the um, green section for the top to show the the leaves or the stem so as I say the bottom bits not as pretty as the top but when we put them down anyway we only tend to see the top so grab your green yarn and I shall show you how to make this last step so this last stage is actually really easy you just want to make your slip knot again whichever way you prefer insert your hook and we're going to chain two to begin with so 
So yarn over, pull through and yarn over and pull through. And we're going to be working into that first chain again. And you want to do eight double crochet into that first chain. So remember, this is double crochet in the UK and that is single crochet in the US. So that's my third double crochet. Four, five, turn it as you're working. Six, seven, and eight and then you're going to insert your hook into the top of that first double crochet so you'll have two loops on the hook and this time we are going to yarn over and pull through um, all of the loops which are on the hook in order to do our slip stitch we're then going to chain three so one two and three we're going to skip the next chain, which is this one here, and then we are going to slip stitch into the next one. So insert the hook, yarn over and pull through all of those. Chain three again, one, two, three, skip the next stitch, insert your hook into the next one, and slip stitch and then again chain three one two three skip the next stitch insert into the next one and do a slip stitch and then once more chain three one two three skip the next one insert your hook into the next stitch and slip stitch and that is complete all you want to do now is yarn over and pull through to create a knot and again you want to leave a fairly long not as long as before but a fairly long piece of yarn um, so that you can sew this onto your work so once you've snipped off your yarn pull that out pull nice and tight and then we're ready to sew this onto our work so I'm just going to sew this end into this piece here to hide it and then I shall show you how to sew this onto your pumpkin so I've just threaded up my needle and the first thing that I'm going to do is um, insert my needle into the stitches to bring that piece of thread more so into the middle because I want to be placing the centre of this into the pumpkin whereas if we'd have left it where it was we will have started from the side if that makes sense. So you have your leaves ready and what I'm going to do is just insert my hook into the pumpkin from one side to the other. And then I'm just going to pull that through and that brings the leaves onto the pumpkin. And I'm simply then just going to grab some of the stitches and then grab the pumpkin underneath and sew that on. So you might want to lift the leaves up, grab some stitches grab some of the pumpkin and pull through. Do that all the way around and then you have finished your pumpkin. So there you have your pumpkins. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below if you have any requests for future tutorials. Make sure you subscribe to keep up to date with any of my latest videos. And thank you so much for watching and I shall see you again next time. Bye. Thank you.